A skill every machinist should possess is the ability to hand sharpen a twist drill. I know you can buy tools to do it automatically, but unless you want to spend a, a ton of money, you'll find they're pretty cumbersome and time consuming to use. You're a lot better off just learning how to do it by hand. I think you can do, after you base, master a few basic skills, you'll, you'll do as good of a job and a lot faster than you can with a purchase tool. Not only that, but once you, you master some of these skills, you can apply them toward grinding lathe bits as well. Um, <clears throat> basically, you need a couple tools to sharpen a twist drill. Obviously, you'll need a bench grinder. This is just a simple craftsman grinder, no big deal. Uh, you'll also need a, a protractor so you can check the, the point, angle, angle of the point on the drill. And you'll need a 6 inch ruler to check the, the length of the cutting edges on the ruler or on the uh, drill. <clears throat> so to, to start with, the first thing we want to do, this is, a, this is a drill that I purposely mangled because uh, all my drills are sharp. I couldn't find a dull one to use so I uh, kind of ruined it on the grinder here and I will, I'll show you a step-by-step -step procedure how to take it back to its uh, original condition. Uh, first thing we want to do, well let's talk about uh, point angles. There's basically two different point angles on, on drills uh, that you can buy. Um, one of them is a 135 degree included angle. That's intended for harder steels like uh, tool steel and uh, high carbon steel. Um, and another option is a 118 degree included angle. That's more of a general purpose drill. You can use it on mild steel or non-ferrous metals. <clears throat> I like to grind all mine to 118 degrees seems to be a good all-around angle. Um, so the first thing we need to do when we sharpen a drill is to establish the angle of one of the flutes. Since I'm going to use a 118 degree included angle, we're only grinding one side, so that's 59 degrees. So we'll set our uh, protractor for 59 degrees, and then that's the angle we'll grind the first cutting edge. So basically, just okay. This this is a, before we go any farther. This is a tool rest, but I don't use it as a tool rest, and neither should you. Just rest your hands on this. Use that as a consider that as a, a hand rest. All your grinding is going to take place above the rest, up on the wheel. If you hold it up in the air like this, you have lots of control over it. All the axes, you know, you, you don't have to rely on setting your rest right to get the angle. Hold it up in the air gives you complete freedom to move the tool around and correct for different angles. So we'll just uh, start, trying, start establishing this 59 degree angle. Just kind of hold it above center a little bit, above the center of the wheel. Take a guess at the initial angle. Use the full face of the wheel and grind a nice straight edge on that first, first lip. Once you get Something looks fairly good. We'll check the check the angle here and see where we stand. Okay, we're a little bit a little bit flat, so I'll grind grind a little more on the outside to correct some. All right, we're getting pretty close now. One thing I want to point out. Another thing I want to point out is you not only have to get that point angle correct, you also have to get a little bit of clearance angle on the cutting edge. In other words, you want, you're looking at it from the side, you want that cutting edge to angle back a little bit. If you don't do that, if you just make it square to the axis of the drill, the cutting edge will rub behind back here and it won't cut. You gotta rock that clearance angle back a little bit. So three to five degrees is generally pretty good. I'd say just you just hold your drill above the center line of the wheel. You kind of you kind of get that angle. That's probably the uh, biggest mistake people make when they try to grind drills is they don't get enough clearance behind the cutting edge. Let's check our 59 degrees here again. Yep, that's right on. Got a pretty good pretty good clearance angle going here. And if we look at the the cutting edge we just ground, you see it goes past center a little bit. That's a good thing. This first one, we don't care about the length. All you want to do is establish those two basic angles. 
So we'll call that one good. Now we'll flip around the other side. We'll do the same thing to the other side. Establish our 59 degree angle first. And before we get too far, let's make sure that's right here. Yeah, that looks good. Before we get too far, we want to keep track of the length of this one. We want to make it the same length as the first one we ground. That's important because if we get one cutting edge longer than the other, the drill will will wobble. And that when it wobbles, it'll drill an oversized hole, which is generally not a good thing. So we'll just take our, our six inch rule here and we'll just measure the length of each cutting edge. Okay, that one's about 930 seconds. This one's about a quarter inch, so we've got a little more to go. Okay, now we're getting close. Let's check that 59 degree angle again. Make sure, make sure we're good there. Still looking good. All right, and we'll check the length. Make sure the length is the same. Okay, we got about just a hair over a quarter inch on this one, and about the same on this one. Okay, so now we got both of these cutting edges the same length, which is a good thing. But uh, this, this drill's still not ready to, to drill because if you look at it from the side, you see if you tried tried to drill this thing, it would rub back here on this in the heel of this flute. Okay, so we have to take a secondary clearance angle to relieve this back area, and that's what we're going to do next. So line up again, just as you were going to do your your 59 angle, and then raise it up a little higher on the wheel yet, and take a secondary clearance cut. Okay, you can see we got started there. Now we want to kind of walk, keep this line parallel with the cutting edge and kind of walk it up till it's just about even with the, the cutting edge on the opposite flute. Okay, we get pretty close here, a little bit more. Out like that. Now flip around, do the same thing to the other side. You see, I'm just resting my my fingers on this rest. So you can just use the whole face of the wheel and kind of work your way up to it. If you, the, the trick to learning how to grind by hand is to be able to learn how to put the tool back on the wheel in the same position. When you take it off to look at it, as long as you don't change your hand position, you can set it right back down and it'll be in the same position. Okay, working our way over just a little bit more. got both of those relieved. You're looking at them from the side, you'll see got a nice secondary relief here. Okay, and on larger drills like this, sometimes it's a good thing to even add a third angle. Just take a third, just knock this back heel off here, just to make sure nothing drags behind the cutting edge. That's, there's nothing critical about that. Just hold it up even higher on the wheel and just take a little more off. Like that. Okay, now we have a, a drill that we'll cut. It'll cut a nice hole. It'll drill a nice hole. It'll be round, on size. But uh, if you look at the center here, you'll see this, what they call a chisel point. Okay, that's the, the web of the drill. This part does not cut. 
Okay, this just kind of pushes the metal to the side. It doesn't cut. So what we want to do is we want to reduce the size of this chisel point as much as possible. And the way to do that is, is to what's called thin the web. Right? There's lots of ways to do that. Sometimes we can keep a little grind up in this area, take some of that out, kind of up into the, the point a little bit on both sides. I like to use what's called a, a high tensile notch. Okay, to, to do that, it's basically just kind of an, a little angled notch up in the very point here. And what I, what I do to, to get that, make that happen is I use the side of the wheel, kind of feed the drill up into the corner so it's touching all around. Then I rotate the drill a little bit and lock it in. So it just puts a little notch right up in the, in the corner here. Do the same thing on the other side. Rotate it, push it in. Okay, now you can see we have very little chisel point left. This makes the drill not only feed easier, but it makes it somewhat self-centering. And uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, this, this drill's done. It took me a couple minutes here. If I wasn't doing the demonstration, it would have been done in under a minute. Like I said, it's just basic skills, a little bit of knowledge to get started. You can be sharpening your own drills. That's pretty much it.